Coach, there's been reports that Urban Meyer has been urging the Big Ten, Ohio State, to help families travel to the bowl games. Are you doing anything like that? Is Oregon planning to help uh, families get to this bowl game? Well, that's something we, we certainly have tried to push in the in the past and, and just in the and, you know, we want to be able to try to do everything we can for these guys. And certainly there's a, a huge financial sacrifice on, on families to get to, to one game, let alone two games. You know, we have a bunch of guys from all around the country. And, and that's something that we've been very fortunate to do in terms of, of getting our guys home for Christmas, back to the bull site. And, you know, all that travel we can, we can take care of and, and, uh, from a budget standpoint. Uh, and then it's from a legislation standpoint of, of how we have to get you know, over that next hurdle, but we are absolutely working toward supporting the the friend, you know, the the family, the direct family of those guys as much as 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 you as we possibly can, as we have in in the past of trying to push for on official visits, trying to be able to you know pay for transportation of of, of both parents or both you know kind of decision makers in the process. Front center, yeah. And Mark uh, Scott talked about this in uh, at the Rose Bowl. You guys, I guess, don't allow a bunch of coaches in for the spring or people in to, to see the system. Why is that? And, and I think you were around. Why you know, Urban Meyer came here in 11 when Chip was here and, you know, got a lot of stuff from you guys. It's, it's pretty common knowledge now. Um, I think that was I think that was the relationship. I, I think yeah. that that Chip and Urban had. I'm not I'm not privy to that. Yeah. Um, but uh, we're very friendly. Uh, it just depends on you know uh, how much how much we we know the other other party and uh, you know. But we try to we try to gather information more than uh, you know send it out. Right over here. Yeah. Hi, Mark. Uh, uh, you were there four years ago. The staff was there. Some red shirts. What do you tell the younger guys? I mean, this is the Super Bowl of the college football. And it's a Jerry World and the whole thing. What do you tell them about what they're going to experience compared to the normal game? Yeah, we talked about that both um, leading up to the to the Rose Bowl, and then actually talked about it a little bit this morning in our in our team meeting, just of uh, exactly that. You know, the atmosphere will be totally different. The the Ohio State, you know, legendary fan base. They'll they'll. It'll be a different uh, ratio of, of Oregon fans to Ohio State fans, in, in, and it's indoors. That you know that that uh, uh, lends to a, a much more energized atmosphere, and and it's different. You know, and and so we we've we've uh, used that to to fuel our preparation. Again, that's all. You know, we can't we can't change that, but we can we can you know maybe recenter our focus or dial it, dial it in a little bit differently. You're doing a few things from a logistical standpoint differently, uh, but just of, of preparing to prepare is, is what we're all about. Right here in the middle. Yeah, Mark, to uh, piggyback off Dennis's question, there's a lot of things that basically other programs have essentially tried to copy off of Oregon, whether it's offense, uniforms, tempo, whatever. How do you feel about that just as, as the head coach when you see basically other people trying to steal your stuff? We steal stuff too. I mean, it's, it's we're equal opportunity thieves. Um, but... Um, yeah, that 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 can happen, and and yeah, it's it's been funny of especially growing up around this area and, and recruiting against some people that uh, they they use your style against you in recruiting and then do it on the field, which is kind of weird, um, or you know saying that we have too many good players and the gal never play there, which is that's very bizarre. Uh, so that that's just kind of one of those you know back and forth things that that always happens. The evolution of of whatever offense, defense, special teams, scheme, um, people that people that are you know, have one foot in the water, so to speak, of, of our style or our way, you know, a couple of years from now, they'll they'll do something else. Second row, Gary Horowitz. Mark, I know you grew up with the uh, Pac-12, Big Ten, Rose Bowl and everything. And as it turns out, you didn't have that this year, but you get it in the national championship game. From that standpoint, do you kind of like the matchup, just the tradition of it? <laughs> Don't like the matchup when you watch them on film very much. Um, Gary, to be honest, I haven't thought of that for one cent, for one second, other than last week, you know, a couple of people brought that up of why didn't they do it this way? And we have obviously no control over that, but we're, we're very excited to, to still be playing. That's, that's the bottom line. Back right, Steve Mims. Mark, after the Rose Bowl, were you able to watch kind of the end of the Sugar Bowl and see how that happened? Steve, that's a microphone. It'll <laughs> amplify your voice. That, that. And... <laughs> Your thoughts on Ohio State? Just kind of after the game, did you get to see the Sugar Bowl and, and kind of how it went down and, and your first thoughts on Ohio State? And I'll return the microphone at this point. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, got a chance. I think by the time we got back to the to the hotel, it was right at the beginning of the fourth quarter. So saw all of that and uh, didn't didn't see obviously the. I think it was whatever twenty one six and how they came back and all all that stuff. But just I mean two. <laughs> Um, very talented, very physical teams. Uh, and then when you, you flip on the film of, of Ohio State throughout the season, just a, a, a bunch of that, uh, a very physical game, hard-fought game, you know, came down to a, a, a jump ball in the end zone, uh, quarterback playing well, a couple tailbacks that are really good, probably four wideouts that are as good as anybody we've seen. Uh, and then it, uh, uh, what I would consider a typical, just very, very physical and probably a little bit more athletic than they get credit for front, uh, particularly offensively, um, for Ohio State. So very, very, you know, again, a very good team. Right here, Mark. Do you ever do you ever get tired of of you know you were going against Jimbo Fisher and you were the younger coach and he had accomplished everything he had and now you're going against Urban Meyer and he's accomplished. Do you ever get tired of the comparisons and just kind of being the young coach in in these matchups? No, I mean, uh, you know, if again, as long as we're still playing and there's a mat, there's a matchup to talk about, you can say whatever you want. You know, we'll, we'll be, uh, you know, it's it's not certainly me versus anybody. It's us versus them, and 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 uh, our guys, our guys again believe 100 percent in what we do, and our our staff is is in lockstep, and we're playing an outstanding team, and we know that that we'll have to prepare um, to the best of our ability to to have a shot. No, no. Front and center, Dennis, right here. Michael's coming over your shoulder. Mark, I think you were, you were, could have been a preferred walk-on here coming out of high school, and maybe Stanford, too. I'm not sure. Is that Why did you go to Southern Oregon? What happened to the pre-med thing, and how – how did you get the call from Mike to become a GA? It's a big it's question. It's going to take a lot of time. I know, I know. Yeah. Everybody sit back and relax. <laughs> but um, basically, I, I decided not to come here because I thought I wouldn't play. Right. Um, uh, I can't remember exactly how the, the quarterback landscape broke down back then, but Danny O'Neill and, and Posse were, were, were going, and I can't remember exactly what the other, other part of it was. Um, what was the rest of your – oh, yeah, yeah. And then um, – yeah, for the longest time, that was my my goal was to to be a, a doctor, and I kind of through a total weird circumstance uh, got hurt a couple times uh, in, in college. Didn't ended up playing, you know, fake football in in Europe. That's that's a bad thing to say, but um, a great opportunity. Um, and then again, absolute total luck uh, that a job came open here uh, in the summer of 97 which that you know that really never happens in this profession of of uh, that position coming open in the summer and total total luck that ended up interviewing for that and and getting it and then hooking up with coach Pilati and, and Dirk Cutter and the rest so luck third row middle Jordan Mark as you guys looked at your film against Florida State it's an impressive score, but as you know, as game film goes, you're never as good as you think you are. You're never as bad as you think you are. What are some areas you're trying to improve on with this team as you get set for Ohio State? Um, offensively, communication. We had a few communication breakdowns, had a few alignment things. We had a bunch of stuff going into that game. We were, we were trying to do, you know, we had a few <laughs> kind of things that would be very different for them and hopefully not that different for us, and it turned out it was different for both of us. Uh, we had some just, just alignment deals, uh, communication, uh, both up front and on the perimeter. Um, you know, for us, we missed a couple, you know, we always talk about make layups, you know, just throwing and catching and, and executing stuff that's that's there to be made. Um, and then your your other, you know, normal normal things. Defensively, from a communication standpoint, was, was pretty good. Again, had a few misfits, a few times we didn't wrap up, didn't run through tackles, didn't finish things. Um, again, had a couple penalties, uh, special teams that, you know, you know, if we went through each, each thing, it would take a while, but there, you know, a couple things on every play. I thought, I thought our effort, uh, our kickoff coverage team in particular was excellent going against an, a, an unbelievable returner and we'll have another challenge this week. Um, uh, but they played at a, at a much higher level, all 11, uh, better than, than we have to this point. So, uh, yeah, there's all, there's always stuff. Absolutely. Second rag, <clears throat> Mark, Dennis kind of asked you about this, and you said it was a lot of random circumstances that got you here. But I was curious if there was someone or something at Southern Oregon that really made you want to get into this profession. 
Um, I had a great experience there, obviously, playing there. And, and, and Coach Olson, Jeff Olson, who's the, the head coach there, um, when I uh, got done playing, he became the head coach, um, you know, was the first guy to ever hire me, I guess you could say. Uh, and, and certainly, you know, I loved it, being with him and, and a, a very good friend of mine who's the athletic director there, and that guy named Matt Sayer. Um, great, great, just a great guy, you know, and those guys. I've had a great experience with coaches. My high school coach was a tremendous influence on me, Kent Weigel. Um, and so all those were very positive, you know, positive interactions and relationships. And, and so it was something that was always – a, a, an attractive thing. It wasn't necessarily a vocation at that point, but yeah, I don't know if that makes any sense. But right here in the vest, <coughs> and Coach uh, Urban Myers had a, a lot of great things to say about Oregon, how influential uh, the philosophy here has been on his program. Uh, is there anything you can say about what Urban Myers done uh, at Ohio State and uh, the philosophy, the program he's developed there? And this yeah, I mean, he won a ton, <laughs> wherever he's been. And not just, obviously, Ohio State, but, go, you know, go back in the archives of Florida, of Utah, of, of Bowling Green, wherever wherever he's been, they've been successful. And uh, done it with a lot of different guys, a bunch of different ways. Uh, obviously, have a ton of respect for Coach Herman, who's who's moving on to, to, to becoming a head coach. Uh, their defensive staff is a, is a very veteran group of guys, not only whether it's, uh, you know, Coach Fickle, who's been, been there for a long time, but the, the guys um, that they've either augmented their staff with. Uh, Chris Ash has been, you know, a bunch of places and been very, very successful, um, you know, whether it's Wisconsin or, or beyond. Uh, and so just assembled a, a great staff. They've always, you know, they've always recruited well at Ohio State and they're, they're uh, you know, definitely, definitely even, even ramping that up to, a, to another level. Back left. Coach, I find it hard to believe Urban Meyer didn't know the score of your game all those hours after it had ended. Do you allow... You don't think he was selling that at all? Is that what you're trying to say? My question, do you, do you allow for a little underdog reverse psychology here? And also, uh, the second part of that is how do you do, draw the line between confidence and focus? How do we draw the line between confidence and focus? Make sure you're not overconfident. Well, that, yeah, that won't be a problem. Um, I think you, you draw that from your preparation, you know, and, and again, I, I'm, a, I'm a big believer in, in today and, you know, our, our first couple days, first three, four days of our preparation is what is the, is the foundation for a great, you know, confident, fast, free, confident uh, uh, game day. And so if we're ever doing any, you know, rah rahs and get readies and all that stuff that that's today tomorrow the next day and our guys our guys have been awesome as far as how they've they've worked and as for the other part about that yeah i mean there's definitely there's always gamesmanship and it, apparently that we're not the greatest team ever in the history of the world and all that other stuff that that goes on Aaron, third row. Coach. You, coach you've talked a little bit about urban but there was a report i think right around the end of end of the rose bowl saying that you and urban talk almost weekly is that true that is not true. <laughs> okay. Then I'll scratch that question. and just want to ask you about the uniforms then. Do you care at all that there's no trace of green and yellow in the uniforms? Okay, I'm going to have to take the fifth on this. I haven't, I haven't seen them yet. I've been yelled at, but I haven't seen them yet. Royce uh, Freeman says they're icy, but there's no trace of green and gold. Does that worry I, at all? I love Royce, so I'll go with icy okay. as well. <laughs> Thank you. That would be my same description. Back left, Sam. Hi, Coach. I'm just wondering how you prepare for a national championship game against a quarterback with such – small amount of film i mean you, you obviously aren't able to see much on him even mm -hmm. though you have a good amount of time to prepare yeah he he's done a, a great job and they've obviously done a great job with him and whether it's jt barrett or, or him filling in have been phenomenal uh and you know you have to kind of go just just with what you kind of almost what you would do with this guy in these situations and he's an unbelievable unbelievably accurate deep ball thrower and they they do so much in the run game to create confusion or get eyes in the backfield or get get you know safety reaction and then one-on-one -on, -one on the outside and he throws it into a spot where you know whoever it is the the, the receivers these guys go up and make play after play after play in one-on-one -on -one situations or a 50-50 ball is now the new in vogue you know deal and and they they they're about 70 30 on 50 50 balls so that's not good percentages um but really i mean a physical physical guy uh has done you know a bunch of stuff well in the passing game and then is just a very physical tough guy to to just bring down 
you know, is, is, I don't, he looks like he's, I don't know what he weighs, 250, 255, whatever he is. And, uh, you know, it's kind of a combination of the last, you know, whether it's Terrell Pryor or Cam Newton, some of these guys that we played in, in these games uh, over, the, over the last several years, a combination of that. Tyson in the middle, back, kind of. Right. <laughs> you, you guys got guys like Royce and Charles and Tyrell, like freshmen that have immediately come and made an impact on this program. And do you, do you get a sense that they realize how hard it is to get to a national championship game? I mean, it's just their first year and they've had so much success. And I bet you there's a lot of there, there's some like fre or seniors who were red shirts during that 2010 season who maybe thought it wouldn't be a whole another four years until they kind of get back to this this mm -hmm. game. Yeah, I think um, you know probably not to to a certain extent, but just at that, uh, just as those guys when they were freshmen, we talked to the, you know talked to those guys about earning it every single day and working. Uh, you know that'll be a little bit easier to reinforce of a team. You know, a guy that maybe is a whatever redshirt junior that that it hasn't you know been BCS 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 uh, result because it's it's hard every every single day is hard. Let alone, you know, you look at, again, Florida State winning 29 games in a row. That's amazing. Uh, and what our guys have been able to accomplish over the last decade has been uh, amazing. And that's where we just try to distill it down to, to handling our business right now. And, and, you know, some of those guys might not know that we're in the national championship, so don't, don't tell them that. We just think it's another day. Left on the back here. We have Carlos from the uh, Fort Worth Star-Telegram. There we go. Hey, Coach. Uh, what do you think of the way Royce's personality has allowed him to take over this, to accept this leading role as the rusher for you guys? Well, if there's, I mean, he's got a great personality to, to be great at anything. You know, what, whatever, whether he was a, a congressman or a tailback or business owner or what, you know, whatever it is, he, he just shows up, has a smile on his face, asks a great question, and goes to work. You know, he, he doesn't, uh, I mean, when you're one-on-one -on -one with him and you talk to him, he's phenomenal, uh, but he's a, he, he's a pretty, pretty, you know, calm character of, of just, he just goes out and goes to work. Uh, but just a great, another great guy, another example of a great guy on our team that just, he just doesn't say very much and works his tail off, always has a smile on his face and, and um, just fun to be around. Ryan Thorber. <coughs> Mark, uh, preparing for a game th and playing it January 12th, how do you think that helps you guys or gives you a bump in recruiting, and, and what do you do logistically to make up for that extra time? Uh, logistically, as far as... Playing another week or two later. Yeah. Later. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 weird in, in some sense. It's it's obviously not just another game, but it, it is sort of just another week of... of uh, fall, you know, we're in school, they're not, and so that's a, a little bit of a, a nuance to it. Um, but we've had a we've had a plan for this and built a plan for this last summer, and our guys have done a phenomenal job of of you know executing kind of our our long term plan. Um, and so uh, logistically, you know, the time of day and how we're practicing and all that stuff is the same. Obviously, what we're doing during those times is you know it's going to be different from when you start week one to week 26 or whatever it is right now. Dave Welford. Operator, we're now going to go and take some questions if there are any from those who are on the phone line. So I believe the sure. instruction. Go ahead, operator. Certainly. At this time, if you would like to ask a question, please press star, then the number one on your telephone keypad. We'll pause for just a moment to compile the Q&A roster. And your first question comes from the line of Tim May. Yes, thank you very much. Hey, Coach, uh, uh, Urban Myers made a secret of the fact that during his, what I'm calling now his one-year sabbatical, uh, 2011, uh, he spent, he was quite enamored uh, or intrigued with y'all's offense and spent some time out there uh, with Coach Kelly, I guess with you. But uh, do you remember spending much time with him and how many questions he asked, et cetera, and how much you see in what they do now and sort of what you guys do? Um. Yeah, the last part of that I'll answer first. It's 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 always different, you know. Of of I think we're, I think we're, I don't know. I think we're a lot m more different than we are similar. Of just of, and I think that's personnel driven. You know, their 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 strengths are yeah. different different than our strengths, um, but similar. And there's there's definitely some some similarities to it. And then on the first part, I think he and Chip had you know a lot more of a relationship. He was around for several practices. I think that was the. Was that the national championship year, or was it the Fiesta Bowl? 
Fiestable. I don't know. Somewhere in Arizona, we were out there and and um, and he was around. And I, 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 do, I don't remember the level of involvement. He wasn't in like, you know, he wasn't in meetings or anything like that. Um, but but he was around. Yeah, but, you know, he's intrigued by y'all's up tempo. And uh, I would think you haven't heard that. <laughs> You've heard that from a lot of people and stuff. But do you see, you know, I mean, you were talking about that a little bit earlier. But do you see other teams uh, – really sort of picking up on that too. I mean, the more, the more you get into this uh, modern college football era. Yeah, I think, I think, and again, everybody, we steal from people, they steal from us, everybody steals from everybody. It's kind of just how, how it, how it works. Um, but, uh, you know, they've certainly put, put their stamp on it and their style of, of whether it's coach Myers background or, or coach Herman's background or somebody else on their off on their offensive staff. Um, Again, there's there's some similarities, but they're they're you know they're really good, and and we're, we'll, we'll try to we'll try to stop them. If we can limit it to one question to give a chance for more people to ask questions, and also please identify yourself and affiliation. Scared him off. With Our, next question comes. Go ahead, operator. Your next question comes from the line of Greg Couch with BleacherReport.com. Uh, hi, you guys. After you lost to Arizona, you had a, and you had a little uh, early season. It seemed from the outside anyway, some issues with your offensive line. Was there any uh, slump? Is too strong of a word, but was there any sort of difficult time that you felt the team was going through? And how did you feel you had to uh, to, to work through that? Um, there's again, there's always stuff. Whether you win. Whatever our score was last, or you or you lose uh, to, to Arizona, you're always, you know, we believe very much in what we're doing. Our guys believe very much in, in what we're doing and how we're doing it. And there's always just kind of a, you know, from from the media's perspective or the fans' perspective, it's second guessing. From our, you know, from our in our world, that's evaluation. And you go back and you evaluate why something happened and you fix it. And and you know, our guys set about that. Uh, coaches, players. Uh, again, in lockstep to, to, to be on the same page and fix it. Any more questions, operator? Okay, with that, we're going to go back to questions here in the room. Right up here, right up here. Yeah. <coughs> hey. Growing up in the state of Oregon and having a sense of the history, I mean, you got the Trailblazers, and this would be right up there. Have you given much thought to that? Do you, do you take that responsibility, and what do you, you know, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, you guys could be one of the biggest stories ever in the state of Oregon if you're not already, but if you win the national championship. Um, I haven't uh, uh, on the middle part of that, um, but no, it's definitely. And, you know, it's huge, huge for the state, huge, obviously, for our university community, everybody involved with it. Um, and the best thing we can do is stay focused on our, you know, kind of our process and our mission. Um, but, you know, being a part of this has been a, a ton of fun for the last several years. And, and uh, you know, we know what it means to to, to the various uh, constituencies around around us. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, that doesn't mean much to Ohio State. All right, Andrew. A lot of the players talked about um, how this feels like a regular road game, no excursions, no beef bowls this time around. Do you what does this feel like it helps you as a coach prepare these guys kind of not leaving that far before a bowl game, or do you like being in a bowl site and being able to sequester your guys and kind of having that kind of control? Uh, both. Yeah, I think it was I think they did that was some of the talk when leading up to this this college football playoff era is what about you know, what was gonna be the the kind of the emphasis and they they kept the bowl you know bowl experience all the 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 great things about going to a bowl game um there you know in, as part of the semifinal uh round and then this is a little bit yeah a little bit more of a, a business trip you know go in and and go out but we'll have um you know, we've got again. We've got a plan for how we're going to utilize that that time. There's a couple things that are that are minor uh, uh, parts of it. You know, which are more like meals at the hotel or things at the hotel rather than excursions. Uh, and so I think I think it's a a really good balance of of still maintaining the the you know all the good things the the once in a lifetime things of a of a bowl game with the semifinals. And now this is like you said, all all business. 
Time for one, maybe two more. Marcus is coming up right here in the front end. Well, Mark, how do you define good defense? Because one of the numbers you guys have is not very good, 86 in total yards, but your top 10 in takeaways. Um, what kind of jo job has Don done, and how do you define you know good defense? Wins and losses, you know, and 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 again, I, you know, I don't care. I don't care how many yards of offense we have. I don't care how many yards we give up on defense. Turn, you know, takeaways and points. You know, those are those are definitely two things that that are 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 huge. Um, but yeah, it's just like we're sitting in the middle of that game and getting guys out. And I, you know, I don't care if we would have won that game 59-58 if you know we get out with the, the you know healthy and and ready to go for the next one. Um, and and you know, and again, that's it's about we and us and our Keenan, Keenan Lowe. I don't know. Did Keenan Lowe have a catch in the Rose Bowl? No. Keenan Lowe dominated that football game in a lot of ways and didn't ever touch the ball, you know, and those kind of things that, that, that don't show up in a, in a, in a stat line or, or, you know, sometimes do, but then we get a fourth down stop on the, you know, six inches from the goal line. That's pivotal. Uh, they can drive 99 and a half yards, but if they don't score, you know, they can't win. Uh, and so just all, you know, all those things go together. And, you know, we have to score when we create turnovers and all, all that stuff has to be complimentary. Last question, Gary Horowitz. Fittingly, we'll talk about one of your most humble players, if you could. On Tony Washington, one of those signature plays in the Rose Bowl, he, he doesn't really like to talk about himself. But if you could just say a few words about what he's met to the program throughout his career and, and especially this season. Yeah, I think, you know, you look at, at, at Tony just of, of – uh, you know, again, a great, you know, electric smile, great guy to be around, excellent teammate, and then has the, you know, the Arizona experiment penalty and all that, all that stuff. Couldn't be more um, unlike his his personality and everything he's, he does on a day to day basis. And all he's done since then is is lead and you know, and we, like I said right after that game, we believe in that guy 100. Um, percent And and it, it was very fitting for that to to happen in the Rose Bowl and kind of you know get the little lucky bounce instead of getting the you know the 15 yard bow penalty. He 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 uh, certainly certainly flipped the game. You know that was a huge huge uh, huge huge play in the game. We're gonna go one more, Jerry. Yes, Coach uh, Aronis, in the little he's had time to look at Ohio State said it was the best defense he's seen all year, even though they're pretty simple in what they do. So do you kind of agree with that, that this is going to be the best defense you've faced? Conversely, is this going to be the best offense that you've faced? I haven't watched enough offense. They're, they're, they're different. Uh, I've watched, I always watch a bunch of defense and a bunch of special teams first, and then I fake the answers about the offensive guys. Um, but uh, they, they are, they're really good defensively. Um, in a completely different way of Florida State. They, they, they're very sound. They run very well. They tackle really well. Uh, they don't take nearly as many chances as, as, as Florida State does. And then they, you know, like any team, when they get you in third down, that's where they kind of impose their will. And so we need to, to stay out of those third and long, third and extra long type of, of situations, even more, m more important in this game than, than some others. Um, but, yeah, whether it's, you know, uh, Bosa is, is a phenomenal player. Uh, all their linebackers run well. They cover well. Uh, they're they're kind of a you know kind of a cross between you know in this conference kind of a Stanford ish, but then Michigan State very they've got a a bunch of pressures similar to to Michigan State, um, and then you know just a bunch of guys that can run and tackle. Uh, so I think it's a, you know, they, they've got some variation of front a little bit more than, than some of these other teams or the, the ability to be in multiple fronts. Uh, and so it'll be, there'll be some adjustment as far as, as what, you know, trying to figure out what they're doing.